basically tribalic chromium in a plus three state. Uh, it functions to increase insulin sensitivity in tissues that are sensitive, responsive to insulin, such as muscle, adipose tissue. And then it also works to uh, funnel more glucose into the liver, where it can be used to produce glycogen, the storage form of carbohydrate. So that's the only known mode of action of chromium. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Jerry Spears, a professor emeritus at North Carolina State University. So Jerry, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Okay. I spent 32 years working and teaching and research at North Carolina State University. My research area is trace minerals, so I've worked with a number of them, and including chromium, as well as zinc and copper, manganese. So anyway, basically, I retired there in 2012. Since then, I've consulted with Kimmon on chromium and also with one other company on, on zinc, copper, and manganese. So I've continued to be active and, and stay busy, but I have been retired since 2012. Gotcha. So it sounds like you have a lot of research experience under your belt at NC State University, and particularly, it seems like, with trace minerals. Um, But I wanted to talk about one in particular and some work that you've done with the use of chromium propionate in pigs. So to start us off, could you give us a bit of background on the breadth of research done on chromium propionate by you and others? First of all, all sources of chromium have to go through FDA before they can be supplemented animal diets. So in swine, uh, there's two forms that's been approved. Chromium picolinate was the first one in 1996, and then chromium propionate was approved for swine in uh, 2000. Then since that time, uh, chromium propionate has been approved for in 2009 for cattle, uh, 2016 for broilers, 2020 for horses, and then finally 2024 for turkeys. And chromium propionate is the only form of chromium that has been approved for broilers, turkeys, uh, horses, and cattle. And uh, basically, to get approved through FDA, you have to first of all show that your form of chromium increases insulin sensitivity, which is the mode of action of chromium. And then secondly, you have to show that it's second, it's health or it does not affect animal health, or it doesn't accumulate in tissues to a point that would create a human health concern. So those really are the in a, are the three big pieces uh, from an animal standpoint that have to be done. And we're looking at a four or five year time frame to get that through FDA. I mean, it gets reviewed and you get comments back and everything. Yes. So you talked a little bit already about the mode of action of chromium propionate in pigs, but just to dive into that a little deeper, how exactly does that work in the pig's body? Okay, basically, tribalic chromium in a plus three state. Uh, it functions to increase insulin sensitivity in tissues that are sensitive, responsive to insulin, such as muscle, adipose tissue. And then it also works to uh, funnel more glucose into the liver, where it can be used to produce glycogen, the storage form of carbohydrate. So that's the only known mode of action of chromium. And that's why. All sources of chromium, you have to be, you have to show that they're able to increase insulin sensitivity where they can be approved. Gotcha. And we know chromium is a popular tool during times of heat stress, but what other stressors might pigs encounter on a regular basis? Can you talk about chromium's year round value, especially when it comes to some sow farm reproductive uh, parameters such as reproductive performance, litter size, and weaning weight? Basically, uh, conditions that decrease insulin sensitivity. Or called insulin resistance. There, you're more likely to see a response to chromium. This would include pregnancy in swine, lactation. These both decrease insulin sensitivity, heat stress, crowding stress, disease pressure. These are some of the ones. And basically, uh, you mentioned litter size in swine. Uh, there was a study done with 250 sows over two reproductive cycles, and in that study. Chromium propionate increased the number of pigs born alive by 0.75. And actual weaning weight per litter was increased by 3.1 pounds, which is quite good, quite large, yes. So you mentioned also about how chromium affects the tissue. 
So can we expect to see any carcass and meat quality improvements in swine with chromium supplementation? In growth finished pigs, uh, there's some research increase indicating it can affect marbling, which gives the intramuscular fat that gives pork its flavor. And then also it affects water holding capacity. Basically, cooking loss is less, meaning that the meat would be more moist. Also, when freezing and thawing, less moisture is lost. So more water, more moisture is staying in the pork. And uh, and I should talk about the responses that have been seen in, in grow finished pigs. Uh, a recent study was published from Kansas State where two studies were done under commercial conditions with 1,200 pigs in each study. And in one study, they saw an improvement in gain. The other one, an increase in feed efficiency. So these are were large scale studies under commercial type conditions. Gotcha. And you mentioned a little bit about this already, um, but in terms of other sources of supplemental chromium, you mentioned chromium propionate, of course, which we've mainly talked about. But you also mentioned chromium picolinate. Um, so with those different sources and other ones that are available on the market, what all do we need to look at when picking one of those products? Yes, there are other forms of chromium propionate out there commercially available generic forms. These have not been run through FDA to show that they increase insulin sensitivity. They've also not been shown to be safe when fed to animals. And uh, chromium exists in two major valence states. The plus three is what functions in the body. It also exists as hexovalent chromium, which is produced in certain some industrial, industrial products. This form of chromium is very toxic. It goes directly to the mitochondria in the cell, and it's also known to be carcinogenic. And chromium propionate, chemtrace chromium, is very low in hexavalent chromium. Other forms that are available may not be that low. You know, I say little is known in that area. So now they're not necessarily the same, that's my, in my opinion. Yes. So you mentioned those grow finish studies that you guys conducted. Um, so when you dive into that a little deeper. What, did you guys see any sort of benefit in terms of economics or return on investment? Well, in the growth finish phase to feed chromium for roughly 125 days, the cost is approximately 14 cents. And uh, it would just take one pound of additional gain to give you a good return on that investment. In terms of the sales, to feed chromium year-round to sales, the cost is around $1. And if you look at the increase in litter size, or and winning weights that was seen due to increased litter size in swine, uh, 3.1 pounds, that would be equal to about uh, $11, which gives you 11 to 1 return on investment, which is, is very good. Kemen calls all swine experts. You already know the key to a profitable swine operation is healthy, productive pigs. Our team of swine experts are driven by curiosity to create science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash swine. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Jerry, for coming on the show and sharing all your experiences with us. Thank you. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. And if you want more background on the use of chromium, you can go to kemen.com slash chromium. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.